Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My face is probably covered in mud. We just got back from riding dirt bikes. But anyway, uh, my name is Matt. This is uh, the cheapest forklift on Marketplace, part three. Uh, gonna do be doing some repairs today. I messed with the brakes and uh, fixing the muffler because the muffler was shot. So uh, we're working on getting all that fixed and uh, yeah, hope you guys like it. Just to do a quick recap, guys, what this is, is I drug home this awesome old forklift that I found on Marketplace. Sprayed it down with the steam jenny. Got <laughs> Managed to get it running just good enough to get off the trailer, and I mean just good enough. <laughs> Kept it running long enough to try to fit it in the garage. Had to take the roll bar off because it was a little too tall to fit. But we got us a solid base for a good project. Today we're going to fix it up a little bit better. Not bad for 200 bucks. All right, here we are back at this distributor with the Medusa head of plug wire sticking out of it. Uh, I was going to trim these wires down, but this was not like one of those kits where you can crimp the ends on or something. These are like uh, professionally squeezed on there from the factory. So if I cut them down, I'd have to have the new ends to clip on them and shorten them. So I'm just going to zip tie them all up nice. I know you... So it's not ideal, but I'm not buying plug wires because these plug wires are actually in good shape. No cracks or anything to them. They're still real flexible. So I'll coil them up nice and tie them best I can. All right, that's still a lot of wires jammed into one spot, but uh, it's putting my OCD at ease for right now. The next uh, next thing on our agenda is I want to adjust this timing a little bit. I thought it was off, and uh, a bunch of you commented on the last video that it sounded retarded. So I will try to advance that right now. So we'll start this thing up, loosen the bolt down here on the distributor, and this whole distributor should uh, be freed up, and I can change it a little bit until we hear it uh, smooth out idling. All right, here goes nothing.
I don't recall if I mentioned it in the last episode or not, but I found the air cleaner for this thing. We'll get that installed right now. I'm not entirely sure how it goes on here. Alrighty, I believe we're done on this side of the machine so we can put the uh, cover back on. Spring's a little loose but it'll hold. I think we're done on this side of the uh, machine here for quite some time so we'll stick this cover on. See what see what she looks like all dressed up not too bad boys I think she looks pretty sharp for 200 bucks so I go through a lot of aerosol cans in the garage here like uh, brake parts cleaner and stuff like that so uh, one of my new favorite things to do with the old $200 forklift here is crush all these cans so they fit better in the scrap can Don't get much flatter than that, boys. Okay, we're gonna turn our attention here to the brake system now because uh, I wanna be able to drive this around my neighborhood a little bit on the road. And with no brakes, we got some hills around here that would be pretty sketchy. So this is the brake uh, master cylinder. This, I don't know if this was some kind of reservoir up here or a lid you could see through or what, but this is aluminum and this is steel. So if you know anything about iron and aluminum oxidation, basically this aluminum is going to weld itself to the steel over time if this thing isn't removed for a while, which looks like it happened because it had some hex up here, probably for you to get a wrench on, and that's all busted off. So hopefully there's a hole down through it here in the middle. Hopefully I can stick this uh, easy out in there and get a bite on this thing and twist it out of there. But before I even try that, I'm gonna heat this thing up a good bit with a propane torch and spray it with some blaster and hopefully that kind of gets in there through some capillary action and lets us uh, bust that loose. Still on fire down there.
<clears throat> well, that didn't go well. Maybe try that again. Now that everything that can burn is soaking wet. No, just eating the aluminum right out of that. So the next process is going to be a hammer and a chisel, see if we can't get it to turn that way. Really ideal to be trying to swing a hammer, not a lot of room. might end up having to take the whole assembly out and putting it in a vise, which I really wanted to avoid, but maybe what needs to happen here. Still pressure in the brake line, so that's a good sign. Interesting. Oh, she broke loose. Hot dang. We got lucky. We'll be getting a new one of these bolts, that's for sure. Yeah. Boy, this forklift likes me for fixing it up, but I think that's why she's been rewarding me with easy fixes. She didn't she didn't want to go to the scrapyard. Oh, that's that's good news right there. Look at that. Huh? Look at that. So we got our brake master cylinder here in the vise now can get a lot better access and heat this thing up better and hopefully get the chisel on there and knock this thing loose. When you heat that up, uh, it'll actually suck the, the oil down into the joint. It's called capillary action, and I don't know the, the physics of it, but it works. Man. I'm not having any luck turning it, but what I am doing is I'm just slowly chipping away at this uh, aluminum and I'm seeing where the edge is, so that's good. I, I might actually just be able to smack it like this and break it in half and pull it out in pieces. Yep. 
Looks like that's going to be the way to go. There we go. Should all just practically fall out now. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. I'm dump all that junk out of there. Right in the scrap bin. All right. We'll just clean out this reservoir now, and I'll have to find a pipe plug that'll fit that. Hopefully a pipe plug fits in that. And uh, hopefully the seals aren't shot. All right, well, I punched in the numbers on the side of this thing, and uh, they have the exact same one on Amazon for $29.88 plus $12.60 shipping. So, uh, yeah, if this one doesn't work, I know what we're doing. All right, I, uh, looking down through the uh, fluid passage in the bottom of the reservoir, I can see that the bore in here where this plunger goes in there I can see that it's got some crustiness in it so uh, we got everything apart we might as well just take that apart too and clean it out inspect the o-rings and all that hopefully we can get this jeezless clip out without sending it into low earth orbit here in the shop there we go didn't even die there we go. Crustiness. Coming. Oh. She's a bit tight. She is a bit tight. Oh, yeah. Might have just been a little bit of dirt in the fluid system. Yeah, what's that, you know? Yes. So we got... Well, the seal itself doesn't look too bad. Got some crusties here on the piston. And... Some rustiness here along these fluid passages. Get the rest of this out. Yeah, actually it really doesn't look that bad. Hopefully I can just clean everything up here real good and put it back together and we'll be in business. Tiny little bit of pitting in the bottom of the, uh, in the bottom of the cylinder here. It's not ideal, but I don't think it's gonna kill us. So what we're going to do, since we already got this part and we're going the extra mile already, we are going to throw a quick light hone in here to get rid of the rust ridge here at the beginning of the cylinder and that little bit of pitting will just knock down the high spots on it. Got our little uh, brake hone here. I always oil these pads up individually real good so you don't ever have a dry start anywhere. We'll just make a few passes through here, nothing substantial. Like I said, just, just taking any roughness out of it.
It feels a lot better in there now. I'm glad we did that. No rust ridge in here at the beginning. Yeah, that's good. Beautiful. I'm happy with that. There we go. Hoorah! Yeah, slide's nice. All right, I guess uh, all we got left to do now is find a cap that'll fit in there and uh, hook it back up. That's right, I'm not one of those animals that just leaves this thing sticking up there. That drives me nuts. Okay, it just so happens that I was raiding through my uh, pile of crap I save over the years, and I have another master cylinder that's very similar to the, uh, the one we have from the forklift, and the cap's the same, so I tried to take it off and had the exact same thing happen to me that happened to whoever tried to take the cap off this master cylinder. So, that's junk, but... Um, what I did come up with here, I went to the hardware store and I couldn't uh, get a cap like that from Napa. They couldn't find me one. So what I did is I found a uh, nylon plug here that threads. The threads aren't the same, but the nylon, when I crank it in there, the nylon will just kind of form itself to work with the uh, steel threads. So it threads in there far enough to get it started. And then uh, I just put a uh, blind pipe plug in this end. So that should be good and it shouldn't give us too much height to clear the uh, floor pan of the uh, forklift. Okay, this master cylinder, I let it sit overnight, hoping that it would pop back loose, and uh, it sure hasn't, so we're going to go ahead and pull it back off, unfortunately, and have to tear into it and see why she no work. I hate brake fluid. I hate it. Man, do I hate it. There we go. All the surprise inside. There we go. Well, game over. I just, uh, tore this seal, I was trying to get this off of the plunger here, and uh, ended up tearing this in half, so, uh, we're going to see if Napa can't get us the proper rebuild kit, if not, new master cylinder. Okay, since I totally made the uh, master cylinder useless, I just jacked the forklift up here from the back, and I'm going to give it a shakedown test, I've got it cribbed up there on a cross member with some uh, good wood cribbing. So a uh, shakedown test, if you don't know what that is, is you grab the wheels here and you rock them back and forth in this plane and that can tell you if you have a kingpin or a wheel bearing going bad and then you rock them back and forth in this plane and that'll tell you if you have a tie rod end going bad or slop in your steering elsewhere. So let's do that. Give them a roll, first of all. You can kind of hear a slight ball bearing noise, but not bad. And there might be a slight bit of play in it, but not much at all. Uh, and we can take this cover off and maybe just tighten the bearing up a, a, a hair and see if that takes the play out. A lot of times it will. Side to side, we got a lot of play, and I know I've already kind of inspected this from up top. I could kind of see where a lot of the play's at, and I'll show you that here in a minute. Keeping in mind what we paid for this thing, though, that's not really bad. That's fairly respectable. I'm thinking, best I can tell from the serial number breakdown is that this thing is a 1950. Uh, it could be newer. I don't, I'm not sure. But, uh, you know, things this old this much hours on them that you know they're gonna have some slop in the steering they're not gonna have the tightest steering in the world you just kind of got to expect that 
and we can go through and do a bunch of work to make it tighter and I, I do want to get it tighter than it is because it has about a, almost a full turn in the steering wheel before the wheels start to move so hard to be accurate with the forks like that so we'll try and tighten it up but I doubt we're gonna get all the slop out so this wheel spins really nice but it's got a loud bear ball bearing noise if you probably heard that rumbling uh, and it has see that these back wheels are on a pivot too so it's, you gotta really take your time and wobble them just right so you know you're feeling the right amount of slop in them or you're feeling the slop in the right places So this one has a little bit of slop, uh, definitely more than the other side. So we'll probably do the same thing, take it off, tighten it, grease them. But uh, this side might be a candidate for bearings, just listening to that rumble. That just might be dry bearings too. We'll see when we take it off. It's not like your car going down the road. You can get a little bit of slop in these without having any, any trouble. This thing isn't ever gonna go more than five, 10 miles an hour. This piece right here that you're looking at, I believe somebody in a previous video told me it's called the spider. That's where the pitman arm and your inside and outside tie rods meet up onto this plate right here. And it has considerable amount of play in it. There's a pin where this whole plate pivots. I don't know if you can see it, hold on. See the whole plate turns like that. And where the plate pivots in the axle obviously has a lot of slop in it so the plate will move up and down when you're trying to steer like so and creates a lot of slop in your steering what I'd like to find out is if there's a way I can tighten that up or it has to come out and have a bushing pressed into it because if that's the case I don't know if we're gonna fix it uh, either way this is gonna get hit with a steam jenny again before I even think about working on it I'm sure these tie rods all have some slop in them too, and these are the adjustable kind, so that's good. We can uh, take the pins out of these, and they have a threaded end there. You just tighten them up a bit, and that'll take the slop out. Moving further forward up here on the machine, we have the exhaust, or what's left of the exhaust. As you can see there, the whole front of this muffler is missing, and that's why this thing sounds like a dang uh, Harley Davidson sitting here idling. Uh, it's supposed to come in, make a loop, and go back out and vent out to the back of the forklift. Uh, but the front's missing here, so it's just deadheading out here right into the tire and echoing off the ground and everything. It's being really loud. So the shell of this actually feels like it's still got some meat left to it. So maybe we could patch it up in a worst-case scenario. I'm going to start trying to take this muffler off of here now. Ugh. Just undo these two clamps back here, and there's some mounting bolts up along the floor pan. Should come off. There goes that nut. That one broke. That's alright, we can put another one in there. Okay, best I can tell it's just this one last bolt here and uh, this muffler should fall off. Should. You know how that goes. Alright, nuts off. Sweet. All right, well, I wasn't getting anywhere trying to knock the muffler off the uh, downpipe. So I decided I'd unbolt it here at the manifold, and of course I snapped off a bolt when I did that. And it couldn't have been on the left side there, because that was the easy side. You could just through drill that and uh, be done. So now I have to try and weld the nut on that thing and get it out of there, or drill it and pull it out with an easy out, but I doubt that's going to work. But anyway, we'll try and fish this thing out the bottom here with the pipe still on it. I don't know if I'm going to be able to or not gonna be tight okay since I've got the muffler at least dropped down here where I can hit it better I've got it moving but uh, it's still fighting me pretty good there we go thank God so there's her muffler that's why she's a little loud eh 
kind of mangled this side up a little bit, but not too bad. So let's work on uh, patching this thing up. Okay, this thing is just full of nasty schmoo and gunk. Look at that. So I'm gonna clean it out here over the trash can so I don't have to sweep it up off the floor of the garage. Oh, the filth. Makes you wonder how many years this thing has been like this. I know it didn't get this much gunk on it overnight. <laughs> she leaks, but not that bad. Wow. It's gotta be three eighths inch thick in here. I'm seeing some pinholes here though, I'm not liking them. That's a shame. I guess I'll clean this whole bottom out because that's where the moisture would have laid. So that's the sides that's gonna be rusty. I'll clean this whole bottom off real good and see if it's worth patching. Doesn't seem too bad, just a couple little pinholes. I could probably get some weld to stick to those, we'll be all right. So I found that one of these uh, these tiger discs on an angle grinder, it's kind of already worn down a bit. Uh, does a good job cleaning up rusty metal that's real thin like this. That way you don't accidentally take a little bit too much material and make it even harder to weld. This will just take the rust off and leave clean metal. They cleaned up pretty good. We'll just cut a piece of plate and lay it across there and weld it from the outside and trim off the excess. Okay, I found a piece of plate that's about the right thickness. It's a little bit heavier than the muffler and that's fine because when we go start welding, I want something good and solid that I can actually melt to and just kind of lap the weld up onto the muffler because uh, I'm sure that muffler is just gonna start uh, pitting and popping and blowing apart. Voila. Okay, nothing to it but to do it. It's pretty good to me. Well, it's welding good, but my mask isn't working. I see I've got a spot where the lens is busted there. I don't know how that happened. This is an old cheap mask, so looks like I'll be getting another one. My good one is out at the farm right now. I accidentally left it out there. So, we'll have to get by with an old cardboard with a taped in standard lens. I made this thing in a pinch years ago. This is an old divider out of a 30 pack and uh, standard shade lens uh, and some duct tape and I made it in a pinch and I've been using it for years it's it's the only mask that's never let me down it's mm -hmm. a nice thin metal
This is gonna take a while. I'm gonna turn my heat down and uh, put you guys on time lapse. Hallelujah. <clears throat> that sucked. That's done. Most of it welded pretty easy. Uh, not bad at all. But over here, this is the side where the exhaust has always come in. And that's where the moisture, I imagine, was accumulating. This side was really bad. And you can see I had to come up almost an inch from the plate we welded on. This just kept blowing apart. So I just kept stacking beads of metal up and up, climbing up this thing as we went. And uh, finally got it filled in to where it doesn't have any pinholes in it. How long it's gonna last, I don't know, but you know, it'll last for long enough to make it viable for what we did. And then when it completely rusts out, we'll search for another one. So here's our broken stud right here. There's really not a whole lot there that we could put a nut over it and weld to it and try and back it out that way. So I'm just gonna go ahead and drill it out now. Uh, so we'll center punch this thing and start with a small bit and work our way up. you believe in all the buckets, bins, organizers, and drawers of bolts I have around here? I don't have another 7 16 bolt any shorter than 3 inches. This is just temporary, but I want to hear what it sounds like. I'll get the proper bolt once the quarantine lifts. Got a bunch more 7 16 apparently. But I ain't got any. Alright. Got the muffler back into this thing and that was one of those 20 minute projects that turned into an all-day affair uh i feel like i'm letting you guys down i wanted to get a lot more stuff done on this thing the wife's been home working from home all week because of the uh the corona thing so she's had me a laundry list of honeydew projects so i haven't been getting as much spend as much time doing this as i wanted i wanted to get down to the church this week that didn't happen uh i'm, I'm gonna need to make some lumber trips and things like that and i I don't want to go out, first of all. Second of all, I know the lumber store I typically go to, which has the best prices, uh, they, they're shut down. So, But anyway, I'm excited to hear this thing fire up now. We'll see what it sounds like with a stinking muffler on it.
I'll spin it so you guys can see all the smoke coming out. We're burning that off. It didn't smoke before and I made it smoke, so yeah, I'd say I fixed the crap out of it today. Alright guys, about as fixed as it's going to get for today. I still have a laundry list of stuff to do on this thing, so there's definitely going to be a part four. Uh, if you like the video, thumbs up. If you like this kind of stuff, there's going to be plenty more uh, dragon home dead projects and everything else. Uh, so if you like that sort of thing, hit the subscribe button and I'll catch you guys next week. Later.